uh, here's the disclosure. Um, you can read it. Uh, I'll give you 10 seconds to read it. I'm not going to read the whole thing myself. And, you know, this is beyond training. We're going to be talking at after we do an hour together. I'll be talking briefly about the program that you can buy. And uh, this is the typical disclaimer that goes when there are stock recommendations going out. And it, it's a real one. Uh, it's your money, your equities, your risk. Um, in this training, uh, the focus is going to be selling weekly options, and of course, there are monthlies. And most of the logic and most of the process here that you will see extends to monthlies. But I really do want to focus on weeklies. The numbers and the math are about weeklies. Uh, this is a proven strategy in real world, not proven on some computer or doing back testing. And in my own personal and humble opinion, for income investors, now income, uh, I use the word interchangeably with cash. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people in my services extract, uh, don't extract, uh, do extract income, but most people reinvest it. But they're sort of used uh, interchangeably. And at the very end of our training and our discussion, I'll give you a brief overview of the program itself and what you would be getting. Um, we have a lot to cover. Uh, it's the old song from this movie, which hopefully some of you are young enough not to have seen. Uh, we have a long way to go, a short time to get there. So um, my background, I want to reiterate, uh, what is just said, half as an individual and half doing this kind of advisory work. Uh, I've been in this even more than 30 years. I have two books. I used to run a short service, uh, an advisory short service, similar to an income service and made in America, which I wrote about four factories. You can still get it. It's, it's about how factories succeeded during the crash and the recession. And I do contribute uh, when there's a topic that I think is important and people need to know about. An options income blueprint uh, has been uh, up and running for six years. Uh, I've actually been selling options for weekly income or for monthly income longer than that. And uh, I, I want to start this with the real world. Um, if you come to our website and I'll give you some URLs, uh, we have a, a sales area where you can learn more before you decide to spend any money. This is a fellow named Rick uh, from North Carolina. Um, he wrote and told me uh, um, about his income doubling every single year over a three-year period. Now, I'm going to get into more details later uh, in, in the presentation. He volunteered. Um, this was not uh, something that we asked for. And Per uh, from San Diego, he was classic options trader, wiped out trying to buy options, taking on way too much rigs. And as I said, unsolicited. Uh, he came to us and, and wanted to share, and I do once a year, sometimes twice a year, face-to-face -face seminars. This, these were pictures taken from the two gentlemen. We were all together in Orlando at the end of uh, January. Now, what they're talking about in terms of uh, their $25,000 in profits from pair, and you'll see Rick's numbers later on, happened in just one year. So this really is what is possible for you. So if you're frustrated, you're trying to get more income. You're trying to generate more cash, safe, smart, consistent, reliable income. I and mean, that's what we want with our cash and our income, safety and reliability and consistency. Of course, you're not alone. Both of these students had the same experiences that hopefully you will have. They've lost money in the stock market in 2000 and 2008, or even recently, usually through buying options. They're, um, uh, they're, they tried buying options because of the promise of outrageous returns. And they're sort of struggling for their goals to build a retirement portfolio, to build a cash rich portfolio. And this is true for you because you don't have many low risk choices for yourself. Uh, in this training, I'm going to teach you how to transform the income generation experiences that you've had to get a five figure income from your portfolio without a lot of high risk to your capital in the next hour. Probably less, actually, because I like to leave time for questions. You're going to learn a powerful weekly income strategy proven to work with that six-year track record that can put hundreds to thousands of dollars into your pocket every single week. This um, weekly income strategy is simple to follow. It's very simple to follow and very low risk. Uh, it can restore, if you're in this position in life, your retirement dream. If you're not near there yet, it can restore your belief of a more aggressive uh, later life from your portfolio. It can 
give you the, the thought of a steady income stream while still protecting the core capital of your portfolio. And it can put hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars of cash in your pocket, either every week or every month, depending on the size of your portfolio. It should help you eliminate the frustration of low yields on what you may now consider to be the only safe things in the market, bonds and dividend stocks. It is much higher returns than low returns from index funds, low interest on CDs that are in your savings accounts. And of course, it partially shields you from the high risk of owning shares. And the cornerstone, the, the heart, the cornerstone, the cornerstone behind this transformation is learning how to sell, not buy options. Now, I know most people start blowing up the chat boxes. Trust me, I've done these before. When I say sell and options in the same sentence. So let, let me explain what I mean. Selling weekly options, selling weekly options is the new power income source for you, for investors if and only if you approach them correctly. There is no such thing as a get rich quick scheme set of tactics, but if you approach the sale of options incorrectly, you will experience get poor fast. The purpose therefore behind tonight's, today's training is to teach you how to sell weekly options correctly to uh, get that yield that without high risk to your capital, to give you a simple strategy that I personally have taught investors like you for many years and to show you why most investors fail when selling options and how you can be successful. They certainly, even the worst investor does better than when they're buying, but this is the correct way to sell options. And what you'll learn can be done in about 30 minutes per week. Now, as I've said, usually when people hear options, they say, oh, no, 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 I've traded options before. But if you follow this simple low-risk weekly options income strategy, and again, it depends on how you configure a portfolio, you'll discover you can average at least $250 per week in additional income. That's $1,000 a month on a $50,000 portfolio. Smaller portfolio, portfolios down to even $25,000 can still take advantage of this strategy. Now, we're going to come back to those numbers in a moment, but the goal is to teach you how to get 20% or higher cash returns, income returns from your portfolio. Now, you may not think 20% sounds like much, especially when you hear option buyers bragging about their 300% or 500% or 800% return. But there's something that I'll tell you how rarely those returns happen in the real world. That's because... 85% of options expire either worthless or they're never exercised, which means the option buyer is losing money 85% of the time. If the options buyer is losing money, who's making the money? Well, the option seller is making the money. And that means the option buyer in general has a one in five chance of a trade working out in their favor and even if it does work out, it's not guaranteed to get those fabulous returns you see in advertising. But the option seller has a more than four and five chance of a trade working in their favor. So two quick things here. The obvious point, which I'll drive home further in this training, that you should not buy options, especially if you have a cash and income focus. You should learn to sell options instead. And what if I could show you a strategy which is successful when selling options 98% of the time? Those are real numbers, folks. Um, because this is an actual six-year track record. Six years, 72 months, 360-something weeks. An important advantage the option seller has is that the income you're bringing in, it's known when you place the trade. The options buyer does not know what their actual return will be until the trade concludes. So which trade would you rather make? A high risk trade with an 80, 85% likelihood of failure where the outcome is really a complete unknown or a lower risk trade with an 80 to 85% likelihood of success where the outcome is known, cash in your pocket, as soon as the order is placed. But here's what the option buyer is really buying. Let's get down to it. The right to spend capital 
their hopes of getting a profit. They are buying risk at the expense of potential reward, not vice versa. They're buying insanely ferocious time decay because we are talking about weeklies here. It's true for monthlies that options decline in value due to the declining due to time decay, but it's very, very steep when you're talking about weeklies. And again, I want to repeat this number. They're buying options that expire worthless 85% of the time. Yes, and best of all, um, why is this best of all, I guess, is the question. Because it means the option seller, you, you stand to profit at a minimum of 85% of the time. And as you can see, you put a little brain power to it. In my service, it was 98. When I said before that the outcome is known when selling options is, is because you, the option seller, collect cash immediately. When you sell an option, you collect instant cash. The buyer, literally hands you the money through your broker so that you are now managing profit. You're managing the profit you have in your hand while the buyer is left to manage the risk. Think about that. You have the cash in hand, you're managing the profit, they're managing the risk. The options buyer spends money. It tax their own capital when they place their trade. The option seller collects money, builds their own capital when you place that trade. Over the six years, I've provided option selling trading recommendations. My yearly track record averages 98% successful trades selling options, not buying options. The numbers speak for themselves, and the 2% of trades which did not work out would not have come close to wiping out the gains of the other 98%, and you'll see why shortly. Now, please put this in the context of collecting cash and income in the 98% of your future trades. And I hope you've sharpened up your listening. And I, I believe you can see so far why I advocate learning to sell options, especially weekly options, and why I call this a power income strategy. But let me let me back up just a bit. Um, that's not a stock photo. Several years ago, I too had an income problem that needed an immediate solution. My wife and I have twin sons, and they were both heading off to college. A uh, little lighter moment here. That's my son, Philip, playing rugby. Um, you should have seen mom's face uh, when we saw Philip posting this photo on Facebook. Of course, um, my sons, who I love dearly, they couldn't choose an expensive college, right? Nope. They chose from the list that we had approved expensive schools. And while I'm trying to be humorous here, a little bit of a lighter moment, this is also true for any parent, for any retiree looking for a second home or, or, or looking at a drain uh, or a replacement of income. College education can be ridiculously expensive. So is health care in your later years. So is travel. So is vacationing. So are buying homes and more. In our case, my wife and I face two choices, which I'm sure you have or will face. Empty the retirement account over time to pay for their college. They contributed to, by the way. Or find a low-risk strategy that would allow us to maintain the size of our portfolios, perhaps grow them, without searing them out and keep up with their tuition payments. Did we empty our retirement accounts? Absolutely not. Here's what we did. And it will lead to the first of our lessons in this training, so please pay very close attention, we calculated how much money we needed over the four years to contribute to both of our son's tuitions. We divided that amount by 48 months. I focused strictly, strictly, don't worry about the S&P, don't worry about his running for president, on generating the monthly cash needed in my personal trading. To make that monthly cash amount, I did one thing. I sold options every single week when I could, when market conditions and the stocks I like were there for me. Let's look at this in a different way. Assume for a moment that I needed 80,000 over four years combined for four sons. Um, it was considerably more than that, but we're putting these numbers in the context of the presentation. If you just turn around and had to come up with 80 grand, that's a pretty tall order. It's, it's a near hyperventilating amount of money, isn't it? But 80,000 divided by 48 months it's a different story. It's $1,667 per month. Or let's divide it again. 
$416.75 per week. Doesn't that sound a little less scary than 80,000 as a goal for you to achieve? That's how I approached it, by breaking the number down into a manageable amount so that I would not take or make stupid or speculative trades of rolling the dice and trying to pick up 20 or 30 or 40 grand on one hope and a prayer. And by selling options every week, I'm proud to tell you that my sons, both of them graduated and our retirement accounts when they graduated were intact. They, they were not diminished in any way to pay for their college. Which leads me to lesson number one. It seems ephemeral, especially if you're doing a lot of trading sessions and you're hearing about Greek this and Albanian that and Upsilon, Delta, Phi, Omegas and all the different things that you like to brag about at a cocktail party that you learned in your trading session. It all, it, nothing matters if you don't set goals. Most option traders, option traders, a little less so than investors, but most option traders fail because they don't have goals. Instead, it's the mission for the transaction. They hunt for the big gain on the individual tra transaction or home run trade. And you are going to be different. If you follow what I'm suggesting, you're going to succeed because you're going to take this one simple step first. Set yourself an income goal. When you set an income goal, oh, it, it's, you, you develop the following objectives. You're setting a realistic goal. Then you set out to meet or beat that goal. It can be purely numbers or it can be numbers derived from a worldly need, such as I and my wife have. You reduce the pressure to produce income over the course of a year or two years, if you're going to buy something, into a manageable number, just as I did. And you limit your trades to only those trades. Repeat, you limit your trades to only those trades, which help you reach your income goal. It keeps you from wandering. And here's a simple example. 20% annual income from selling options. There, I just set your goal for you. Let's review this for a moment because it matters to you. It's a little low uh, to my taste, but I wanna keep it simple, keep the numbers clean, and keep it something that you can identify with. Where are you gonna get that 20% this year, or next year, or year after that? You're, you're not gonna get it. Let's go back a little from dividend stocks. Their average yield is less than 3%. Not from bonds, again, yields less than 3%, certainly not, not from savings and CDs, that's 1%. Not from index funds, average returns over the last 16 years are less than 3%. Yeah, you've enjoyed the run the last three years, the last three months, but let us not forget everything that's happened in the last 16 years. And you can try individual stocks, but the risk of loss is greater than the probability, and that's not just my opinion or it's data, of getting a 20% return and you only get that return if you both buy and sell the stock. So the reality for investors today is twofold. You do not have a low risk, low return choice to grow your portfolio or provide a living income. And you're getting a higher rate of return on your money it requires some risk, but it doesn't mean to get that 20%. You need to take on stupid risk. You don't need to, you absolutely don't need to speculate. So if you set a realistic income goal, it's broken down to the week, it will calm you down. It will let you attack this with a steady set of tactics that enables you to generate a consistent stream of income. So let's review some goals and portfolio levels. If you have 50,000 from which to generate income, the income component of your portfolio, your whole portfolio, a 20% annual income goal means you're getting $10,000 per year in income in the first year. If you reinvest, then in the second year, you would have 60,000 generating 12,000 in income. And in the third year, you're gonna be popping that number up, you'll have 72,000 to 14,400 in income and so forth and so on. And where I grew up, 14,400 uh, on top of 50,000 is a pretty hefty return. As you reinvest, no matter what your portfolio size is, your annual income continues to rise and so does your portfolio value. If, however, you need to simply generate income, you can also see here how a simple income goal helps you meet your needs. As this income table shows, depending upon your portfolio value, a small income goal of 20% can have a significant impact. 
This table is constructed assuming reinvestment of capital into your portfolio. So if you're not reinvesting and just taking the income out, you can stick to the year one column since you would use the same capital each year. Now, the final points to make here are these. The only way, in my opinion, to succeed as an income investor, especially when you learn to use weekly or monthly options for income, is to start with realistic income goals. Then break those income goals down into a weekly income goal, which then helps you to the right income trades each to week. For example, if we take the table I just shared with you and break down our 20% annual income goal to a weekly goal, we get this. Instead of looking at 50,000 that we have to generate on a quarter of a million dollar portfolio, we're looking at $961.54. So just as I did with our tuition needs, here you're breaking down your annual income into a goal that is manageable weekly, the heart of consistent returns. Now for smaller portfolios, such as the $25,000 portfolio, let's be honest, $96 doesn't sound like a lot of money. And in a single week, it isn't. But when you have a simple, low-risk strategy that pays you 96 every week, that money piles up week after week. I'll remind you, too, that you can and will find yourself beating the 20% goal on a weekly basis and on an annual basis. We do. And let me show you what I mean, and then we'll move on to the next step in the training process. I want to share results which help you to see how to achieve the modest income goals we've set here. But the results I'm sharing are not textbook. They come directly from the trade recommendations I've made this year in my Options Income Blueprint program. As you can see by the numbers, these, this is all real-world trading uh, in, a, in a brief snapshot, a brief window of time. The average amount of capital needed to make any single trade in this chart was $6,300. We had about two trades working each week, 100 a year. The overall, overall return from the trades for the month of January was $583, again, on one single contract. And we had a $2 loser in First Solar, which had very good earnings yesterday. So a $25,000 portfolio could reasonably have placed all of these trades and generated $583 in income in January. Well, what was our monthly goal? Uh, let's take a look. What was our monthly goal? You can see we easily uh, beaten the income goal for the month. The results you're looking at, of course, is to simplify things are based on selling one contract of the option listed. Larger portfolios of fifty dollars to $100,000 could have sold multiple contracts, uh, $250,000, and generated uh, larger and ever larger amounts of money ranging up to $1,749. Now, we had eight trades working that month, and seven of them immediately paid off. Remember what I said earlier about the option seller being successful on four out of five trades? You're seeing this logic in action right here right in front of you. Now, a caveat, which you'll see in a moment when I, sh when I share our March results, I had additional trades which were opened in February, but not close to March, I mean, when you're looking at things month to month. So I put them in that month for tracking purposes. Still in February, total income on one contract per, per trade was $558. Five trades opened, five trades successfully closed, 100% win rate in February, yay us. Not seven or eight, five because of market conditions. Here's another month of 100% successful trades. Do you notice anything here? Have you looked at these stocks? This is not an Albanian uranium company. This isn't people making underwear for Vladimir Putin. These are some of the great names, companies, which we're going to get to in a couple of minutes, some of the great companies in this country. Tesoro, Independent Refiner, American Airlines, Tiffany's, Expedia. Delta Airlines, Gilead Sciences. In the next section of training, I'm going to show you how I find those companies and why I and my members trade them. For now, let's go back a little and finish looking at the results in the context of our income goals. We had three trades carry over from February to March, and we had four trades carrying over from March to April. March was a little more exciting month, but once again, well, what do the numbers tell you? We produced income in the month of $811 selling just one contract. Again, just one contract. 
we have closed uh, six trades. Um, excuse me. We have closed six trades, four trades still open, working to date, and all have been successful. So for the first quarter, our trades, selling again, just one contract, have produced total income of $1,952. That's an average per week of $150.15 in one contract. And it's important you understand that these results, the consistency of these results, come from the pop in the market that we saw at the beginning of the year, the flatness of the market, and what happened as the market sort of tapered off for a little bit. Uh, so let me get back to the specific numbers. That's an average per week of $150. If you have a larger portfolio, multiply that by two, three, or four contracts, and you can see how much weekly income cash this could mean for you. So our weekly goal for a $25,000 portfolio, I mean to get 20%, is $96 per week, which means we're beating our goal by 56% per week in weekly income. If we maintain this pace, we would generate $7,808 in total income, which is a 31% annual return on capital. This is why I stress to you that the only way to succeed as an income investor when selling options is to set a realistic income goal, break it into pieces, and then set out to beat it. It is also why I said 20% here today is the minimum income goal because <clears throat> I know from six years of experience selling weekly options and making trade recommendations to investors and traders just like you that we can meet or beat that income goal consistently. Let's take a moment. Uh, let me ask you a question. When you look at, excuse me, generating income in this way, does this make sense to you? We take a little pause here. If I could show you a simple strategy to achieve the numbers my, my students, my members are achieving, could you see doing something like this for yourself? If so, let's move on to the next step in the process. Let's talk about weekly options. But first, a few key and, and honest points to make. In order to sell a put option, of course, you must have the capital on hand as collateral in the unlikely event you're going to put the shares. This is called a cash secured puts. This is what I teach and use. No one should be selling ever a naked put. In order to sell a call option, you must own 100 shares of stock held in the event you are called out. No one should ever sell a naked call. To be able to generate a consistent weekly paycheck, as we like to call it, you need at least $25,000 in capital allocated to this set of tactics. And you can do this in an IRA. It's, it's, everybody does it. And the highest premiums and the largest amount of cash produced occur when you sell an option, not when you're using other option strategies. Now, selling weekly options is no different than monthly options except for their duration. Most weekly options exist for just one week, expiring at the end of each week from Friday to Friday. You can find them sometimes five to six to seven weeks out in advance on the bigger stocks, but they do expire every Friday. You can sell monthly options with the same tactics. Now, selling monthly options generates much more cash up front, your rate of return may actually be lower if you sort of measure this, what it would mean over the cost of a year, uh, the length of a year. Now, my approach is to sell monthly options during the monthly cycle they are scheduled to expire. My approach to sell weekly options is during the week they are scheduled to expire, not at the beginning of the week. Typically, I will sell weekly options on a Wednesday because of volatility in the market, what's going on in my service, sometimes now it's Tuesdays, uh, which means my actual weekly option trades are only open for 48 hours, very little exposure to the market itself. I have found through experience that this Wednesday, off, this Wednesday tactic offers the right blend of time to gain premium available for my trades. A critical benefit here is I just showed you that to sell a put, you need the cash as collateral, but please, it's collateral. You're not spending that money. It supports the selling of the put. For example, from the results I just shared with you on March 28th, we sold a weekly put on Western Digital. The capital required to sell one contract was $7,748. The income cash collected was 52 cents, as it's priced on the screen, or $52 per contract sold. The trade expired worthless a couple of days on Friday, March 31st, meaning we kept the full 52, it's ours, and did not have to pay commission to close out the trade. However, because you sold a put on Wednesday and closed your trade or trade closed itself on Friday, your capital was then freed up to repeat the process 
the following week for another opportunity, perhaps a better opportunity. When you adopt, learn, and practice the strategy of selling weekly options, this, this flow is how you can meet or beat your income goals because your capital is available to you the very next week. It isn't tied up holding on while you pray onto some deadbeat stock or even some good stock that may not be moving up. Your capital is available to you every week. You can create your own weekly paycheck all year long opportunistically based on what really is the right thing to do that week. So let me align the benefits of selling options and, and we'll focus on weekly options here. When you sell an option, you get instant cash. You're transferring risk as we've seen to the buyer. They're buying the risk, sell it to them, give them what they want. You own the time decay advantage, especially with a weekly option. Since these options expire every Friday and we're typically getting in on a Wednesday, the time decay, which is how fast the premium and the option declines, is magnified. It's to your benefit. When your sold option expires worthless, which is the goal we have when selling an option, you keep all the cash you've collected. When your sold options premium is a nickel or less, many brokers now uh, will not charge you a commission to close the trade. So you want to close it out. Two o'clock on a Friday afternoon, you're going to the ball game. It's two cents. You spend two cents, uh, $2 a contract, and you don't pay a commission. Again, when you sell an option, you get instant cash. Uh, selling an option is just like selling anything. You're being paid by the buyer. Risk transfer. If you're selling the option, you're transferring risk to the buyer. You're protecting your capital. You have one tactic available that the buyer does not to protect the trade from losing money, which we'll get into in a moment. And we have simplified trade management, which, which is very important uh, for the consistency of income. When you sell an option, you're managing money you've already made. The buyer is managing risk. So that's a nuts and bolts. It's not complicated. It's not hard to do. What is hard to do, and the reason many investors fail, believe it or not, when selling options, is to sell an option on the right stock. Yeah, look at this, a stock, a company, not a chart. Why is that? Because most investors, and certainly most traders, begin by looking at premium. What's the cash available? That's the amount of cash you would collect on an option when you're thinking of trading it. Premium is both the wrong place to start and the worst place to start. Let me explain. When you try to sell a weekly option based on the premium, you run the risk of buying a stock that is extreme price movements. And uh, those price movements can put you at risk of the option you're selling not expiring worthless. You don't want to see that. We want the option to expire worthless or, or close to it, buy it back for a few pennies, which means we need the right stocks and the right process to identify and sell weekly options so you can meet your income goals. So this is my process for selling weekly options. There's a trend. Fracking, travel, people preferring life experiences. We call it in my service, sushi, not cashmere, 170 million boomers and millennials, that's 170 million consumers, prefer with their marginal dollar to have an experience in life of food or travel rather than buying a couch or a cashmere sweater. From the trend, we get the best companies or company in that trend. Then we take a look at the company stock. You can't separate the two if you're a trader. Uh, if you're a five-year investor, you could, but maybe not. You have to look at the charts. I poo-pooed all the fancy stuff many of you get in options courses, but you do have to look at charts a little bit. Then you look at the chains. Are they liquid? If, if you get stuck one week, can you roll the option into the next week? Things like that. And what's the premium available? And is it available consistently? Is it not just this one week? Um, you want to learn, you want to become familiar, you want to trade Expedia nine weeks in a row, you want to know that there's premium available every week. So where does premium occur? It's the last thing, not the first, the last. And that, my friends, is why I've been successful for six years. This is why uh, our trades have a 98% successful trade track record. Companies, trends, and companies first, premium last. I look first for the trends that drive the stock market, what drives Wall Street and preferably ahead of Wall Street. Then I look for companies in those trends, which are the best position to capitalize on the trends. You think I'm right about millennials and boomers liking to travel and you're deciding, well, should it be an airline, should it be a hotel, which hotel, which airline? Well, you got to book them all through Expedia. No brainer. Um, then I look at the stock, including the current price and the fundamentals. I, I keep a bullpen. Uh, that I use and it's available to my master's people um, 
It's 30 something stocks, 22 have weeklies, and all but two sell at a discount to the S&P 500 or a discount to their sector. And then I look at the chart, and of course the options chain is the stock in a defined trading range. Company today, EOG Resources, the best fracker in the world, has the perfect trading range. It's trading between 90 and 100. That kind of swing generates the kind of premiums you can do almost eight to nine tenths of a percent a week, which is 38 to 45% a year. This helps when selling puts or calls, all of this together, because it tells me whether I want to sell a put or a covered call, because if the stock is moving up, you buy the shares, you sell a call that's out of the money, you collect both the premium and the appreciation of the shares. And what's my risk for the option not to expire worthless, meaning, and the risk is not to a loss of capital, but to being in the trade longer than you planned. And what strike price, and the most important thing possibly, should I consider selling it? Then I look at the premium. If the premium is moving me towards a weekly income goal, then it's a trade I wanna make. If the premium is too low and conditions you got to factor them in, then this is a trade I would avoid and look for another opportunity. Generally speaking, and for the purpose of simplicity, I'm looking for premium that generates at a very, very minimum, 1%, one half percent or higher return on capital for weekly option trade. Today in the service, a trade was put on Western Digital and it was about 0.62%, uh, which is a little bit low for me, but it was well above that half a percent a week threshold. So, and speaking of which, let's look at a simple example from the results I shared earlier. Remember the Western Digital Trade example? Let me put this into a table. You can take a look at comparisons in the math. Excuse me. Um, the premium in the trade was, I just did it with my hand, was 52 cents or $52 per contract. The capital required was $7,748. If you divide that $52 into the, the capital, you get the absolute return on capital in the trade. In this case, the return was 0.7% versus my goal of 0.5%. Well, folks, that's a good trade. And it's simple and it's manageable because it's broken down by the week. Next, multiply that return by 52. This gives you an annualized return. You really want to compare your opportunities. You know, uh, which one has a higher potential rate of return? Because let's say you're doing the Western Digital for this Friday. Let's say you're comparing using your capital to sell uh, Gilead Sciences for the month of May, which is two and a half weeks from now. You need to use an annualized calculation to see which one gets you to where you want to go. And if we made this trade every week during the year at that rate of return, that 0.7 or so, your annualized return is 35%. That is well, well above the 20% annual income goal, isn't it? That is how you stick to those goals. Can you see why this was a good trade, even though 52 bucks sounds like small potatoes? If you consistently make weekly trades like this, which are higher than your annual income goal, what do you think happens by the end of the year? You're going to beat your income goal, aren't you? Let's go back to finding the right trades to make it digress. Here are three stocks I consider go-to stocks each week during the trading process. This means I look at these three stocks every week because they meet the criteria I just walked through. It's a sorrow. Fracking, they are a refiner, but they're right where the frac the refineries are right near where fracking fields are in the Dakotas. Uh, it's best independent refiner in the United States. Um, the stock is an identifiable range. Um, premiums are fabulous. Uh, if you actually sold on a Monday, because I have a service where we sell just a couple of stocks, and we do it every Monday, um, tremendously high yields. It's a, and it's a classic, it's the most traded stock and options income blueprint over the last three and a half years. You have Expedia. Uh, sushi, not sale, sushi and sailing, not cashmere, as I said. Um, a giant gorilla within the booking market. A nice earnings announcement with 15% revenue growth. It's in a tight trading range, which it's just broken out of the last two or three days. It was trading at 139 when we signed on. It's volatile around earnings. It bounces back 6 to 8% a week. Uh, again, I do this selling on Monday. Um, uh, just to, to show you I'm flexible, I sell in the service on a Wednesday, occasionally on a Tuesday. Um, some people like to take the same ideas and run with them the following week on a Monday. And Corning, member of the Apple ecosystem, they make glass. They make glass for everything. They're the maker of the glass and mobile devices. And we, knew the, we know the iPhone 8 is coming out in September and should probably goose the entire mobile market. So three different stocks, energy, travel, consumer tech, and yet they all fit the uh, criteria that we want to use. So for those of you who may or 
trade options, you probably notice something is missing, right? No Greeks, no technical analysis, no red light, green light. I do not use them. I stick to the fundamental approach that I showed you. Trends, companies, stocks, charts, chains, premiums. And you may disagree with that approach. That's okay. It's your own business. But how do I achieve 98% successful trades? I keep my trading process simple and I stick to it. And just as a digression, I've had people with me for six years. And I have many options traders, hardcore options traders, and they take these trades and they morph them into spreads if they want to do it. I don't do this. Um, but the directional recommendations and the evaluation and the math is what you have to do regardless of the kind of trade you make. You see, when you follow this approach to selling options, two primary goals that I follow, generate that weekly cash and income and protect your capital. And really nothing, nothing else really is more important or comes before these principles. Now, I've recommended to my members over 90 income producing trades in the past calendar year, trades resulting in only three losing positions. But how can you prevent losing trades and still get that little, you know, in your something extra in your weekly paycheck? I like to call it as roll, recover, and boost cash. In the last 12, 12 months, when we rolled an option position to prevent the trade, we actually added more cash to our pockets 70% of the time. Not only did we prevent a losing trade, we turned that trade into a bonus for extra weekly cash income. This may sound unusual, but please let me explain how typical it is. Whether we're selling a put or writing a covered call, we produce cash from the stock market that always comes with certain inherent risks and challenges. Because we look for equity positions with high volatility and short time frames, we may be right about a position. Remember, a position is a stock and maybe multiple trades. Um, we take to produce the cash we want, but the timing could be off. And if the backstory, the reason for wanting to own, buying the stock and selling a call or renting the stock, selling puts, that backstory hasn't changed, then you stick with the position. However, unlike most traders and investors, rather than close the trade and moan about it at a cocktail party, um, we reduce and take a hit to our capital. We don't want also to be put the shares. So unlike most traders and investors, and rather than close the trade out, we roll, recover, and we boost cash. With a put position, you roll really to avoid being assigned the stock. You just don't want to own the shares, and many people don't. With a call, you continue a position because you don't want to be called out of a stock. You think the stock is going to go up and you want to continue to make money with it. The goal to roll a position that will be cash neutral or even better, cash boosting. It is important to view the sale of a put or call, and this is really critical, as the beginning of a position that could last more than one trade. It is not necessarily a one-time trade, and the goal is to eventually close that position with a cash profit. This seems to be the biggest gap investors have had with this tactic, especially experienced options buyers. You do not measure the gain or loss of the first contract you sold. You have to measure the gain of the overall position once it is closed. In the real world, and we're gonna to get to Cesaro. In the real world, many of you do not wanna tie up your capital. I understand that. You don't wanna be put, or, or excuse me, you don't wanna part with a hot stock like Tesoro. So there are times, based on the movement of the options, you do not wanna purchase a stock, you don't wanna sell a stock. To avoid this, you roll. You roll your put position, you roll your call position, and it's when you're rolling calls, of course, it's a happy, usually a happy event because it means the stock is going up. So here's some proof. Let me share with you just a few of the recent roll trades that we closed out. Last month, we sold to Cerro $92 puts for 45, uh, 45 a contract, 45 cents. Well, prices dropped, the stock price fell, and we rolled our position twice, adding more cash with each roll and close the position with $190 per contract, collecting 400% more cash than when we started the trade. Uh, earlier, we sold American Airlines $39 puts and collected uh, $32 per contract, but because the stock was still strong, we, we rolled it once to collect more cash, and 10 days later, we had tripled our cash to $101. Western Digital has now been a regular stock we like to sell weekly options against. We did it again today. We sold a weekly $76 put. The stock now is, by the way, about 88. We, um, after a week earnings report in that quarter, the stock sold off. We rolled our position, boosted our cash to $120, and we finally closed the position profitably. Multiple transactions, patience, 
add up to a position that works. Last calendar year, we closed over 90, uh, closed 87 winning trades, excuse me. During that period, we rolled 22 positions or 24% of our trades at least once. 16 of those 22, we increased our cash. Four of those 22, we kept the same cash. And only two of those trades, so the cash we collect declined, but we still, we still ended up as cash positive. The trade was profitable. We just had to give back a little cash as we rolled it. But all 22 had a profit. For six years, since weekly options were first made available to retail investors, and since the inception of my options income blueprint program, uh, this tactic continues to work for me and my students. It does not mean that those other approaches don't work or don't provide a value. Um, don't take it that way, but rolling and recovery, which is foreign to many people, though on my broker screen, the word roll is right there, it works. Now, let me tell you, let's go to the negatives a little bit. Let me be a little harsh. Why most investors fail uh, when taking this approach. They start with premium. I got an email two days ago from someone who's been with me for years. Could you please take a look? Um, it was Paycom's uh, premiums. It's a payroll processing company. I sent them an email back. Earnings are after the close. Do you really want to be in a stock on the day of an earnings announcement? And he sent me an email back going, thank you. He was just looking at a gigantic premium. The premium was high for the obvious reason. Uh, earnings day. Agreed. A lot of people are not willing to take a half to seven to nine tenths of a percent a week. They want to score gigantic with their trades. They have too many trades. Got to have 20 or 30 trades working. I got to diversify. Um, and they're doing this because they don't set goals. You can trade a couple of stocks a week and hit your income and cash reinvestment goals and you'll be in great shape. Um, losses, nobody ever taught them how to either prevent a losing trade through rolling or how to work to break even. The, the stock sells off sharply. You know you're gonna be in it for a few weeks now and you just set a goal of breaking even, which is a totally different way of managing the position. Patience, oh, I hate being told to be patient. I'm not a patient person. But stuff does happen in the stock market. In the stock market, when you're doing this, you have to be patient. You don't have to get it all in one week. You don't have to get it all in three days. And practice. Trading requires that you learn to master certain tactics so you're comfortable. And when you pull the trigger and make the trade, you're really confident it's going to work. Every one of these reasons for failure are caused by the big promise, guys and gals. Oh, yeah, you're going to make 100% in four minutes. The option people who tell you you're going to make that much money on the next trade. Well, folks, they've misled you. Some of our had lied to you. My favorite was this guy who told investors he was getting 100% returns on his income trades. Only to discover he was selling options at four cents. Yes, four pennies. And then calling it 100% winner when it expired worthless. The commission on the front end of the trade alone would have made an unprofitable position. So I know it isn't easy to find someone you can trust to help you on your income quest. I know it is not easy when a stock you hold suddenly drops 20 or 30% or more. I know it isn't easy to tell you that the only game in town right now is the stock market, which we all know it is. And I know it isn't easy to tell you that the only way to increase your income in our current market, our current financial world, is to learn to sell options. It is easy to tell you this, and please understand this is not meant as bragging. My options income blueprint was the original weekly option service. We began in 2011. We've averaged over 600 members every year for six consecutive years, and many of these have graduated to other, of other option selling services such as Income Masters or the PIPC Club and so forth and so on. Over those six years, we've averaged $21,046.40 in annual income based on the model portfolios we've been talking about from my trade recommendations. Earlier, you heard me talk about Rick. He's a great guy. And... Um, Every story I share with you comes from a student, uh, such as Rick. He is uh, a member of my Options Income Blueprint program, as well as my Income Masters Trading and Coaching program. He does one thing relentlessly. He sells options. And as I said, he reported back. It's the first time he ever did this. He sent me a long email. And here's, if I may, I'm going to read it to you. Dear Michael, I just printed off my realized capital gains from my Schwab account for my first quarter, January 1 through March 31st, 2017. The short-term gain and loss was $17,833.29. The long-term gain loss was $10,962.51. Total, 
$795.80 and four exclamation points. Thank you for all your help in teaching this man to fish. I've never had such steady and dependable results that I know exactly how I accomplished. Find bullpen of good stock, sell puts and collect cash until you buy them, sell calls and collect cash until you sell them. Roll out and up or down when it makes sense. Always collecting cash and repeat. I know the summer months may be more challenging, but I also know my calls expire worthless when the market is weak and I continue to collect that cash with stocks that I know and love. I'm getting ready to buy some AT&T to beat the ex-dividend date of April 6th so I can collect the dividend. Then I will sell calls to sell it and reclaim the cash so I can do more to Cerro or Valoro or whatever. It just works over and over again. Four times $28,795.80 equal $115,183.20. Better than AT&T ever paid me. And I'm usually enjoying, I'm really enjoying this. And I'm retired, not nearly as worried about retirement funding as I used to be. As I have said before, you've changed my life for the better, and I am forever grateful, Rick. Um, sort of makes my day. That's a one quarter gain of $28,795 selling options following my strategies, my stocks, and his own stocks, of course, because he's been doing this for long. He uses my criteria and finds his own names. And as he knows, he's on pace to double his income again from 50,000 last year to over 100,000 this year. This could be possible for you. Possible, not guaranteed, obviously. Possible if and only if you have the patience to set goals, start small, build confidence, and learn to be successful with me first. I told you the outset of this presentation focused on getting a, a, a by figure income by selling weekly options. You've seen how to accomplish this by setting income goals. Second, by breaking those goals down into weekly cash income goals, it's critical. Third, by selling options, please don't buy them, to take advantage of the inherent low risk and the ability to manage that instant cash. Fourth is a correct way. And that correct way is to focus on the right stocks, not starting with the premium. This prevents bad trades. When you put this all together, you have a strategy. You don't just have a set of tactics. You don't have, how do I handle that chart? You have a lifetime strategy to generate consistent weekly income. You have a plan to get more income for yourself that is consistent, reliable, safe, and smart. Today, you can walk out of here and take the information we presented to you and go it alone, or you can get help. So let me give you an invitation to the Options Income Blueprint Program. Um, I'm uh, going to speak for a few minutes about the program itself. Uh, and when I'm pausing here is I'm going to try to call up the appropriate URL, which I'll type in over time. But um, if you're tired of chasing trades that don't work, if you're frustrated, like I said in the beginning, this is how we started our day together. A simple, consistent, repeatable strategy. I really think you need to join me. See what it's like. Don't dip your toe, dip your foot maybe up to your knee. And it goes to a learning process that includes making money. It's not learning through a training program of 12 weeks. It's learning and making money from week one. We, we, you learn the controls and functions of a car by driving. it. We learn simple basic operation. We start in the parking lot and then we go somewhere else. And then we drive at slower speeds and then we get faster over time. And as the problem is, of course, people try to get to a Porsche. They want to go hunting for the big giant return instead of building up in the way uh, I do it, the way we all do it together and the members of the service. This program removes the roadblocks, keeping the car uh, analogy there. The kind of things you run into when you're trying to gain the knowledge of successful selling of options to get consistent, repeatable, significant income. So... Since 2011, six years, it's really the only mixture of education and trading service focused strictly on generating weekly income from selling options. Now, in the service itself, and we'll get to a second, um, uh, obviously, I also um, do monthlies. We did a monthly today as well, an advanced micro devices. Uh, it's a dream trade, absolute dream trade. But there's a test drive here for you to test. It's $79. Um, get started. Um, and I'm going to walk you through what you get. You get the weekly options trades and you get the monthly cash trades. 
Each week, you get the complete instructions on how to sell a specific put or a specific call. It's mostly on Wednesdays, as it is today, sometimes on a Tuesday, uh, or sometimes I'll roll something on a Thursday because there's so much profit the following week to be made. The monthly trades, the AMD trade today was a dream of a lifetime. Um, and it's most, I'd say it's 70% puts and 30% calls, but it really depends on market conditions and how the stocks in my bullpen are moving. The trade alerts are sent by email. They are sent by text, which is optional. And they're added to the members' websites. You're never, you're never out of touch. You're, you also know exactly what to do. I'll, I'll, I give you the exact specifics. I, I, the strike price, the limit orders you should start with, the lowest you should accept, otherwise walk away from the trades. I mean, doing 100 trades a year, just for me, forget what you're doing on your own. You know, you're busy, you miss a trade, you know, four hours later or the next morning, you don't chase it. And I'll also help you close your trades. I don't leave you alone. I just don't put out a recommendation. If it needs to be closed, it gets closed. I even, <laughs> we found members were forgetting they put positions on, so we even put out reminders um, that you have, may have an open position. Um, I have a market analysis update every Monday. Uh, it's a position review, and I usually go over a tactic. Uh, every other week, you know, what do you do when you have to roll this kind of call? And I'll do an analysis of a sector. Once a month, we have live uh, training and coaching session in the evening. Uh, we're probably adding a live training uh, trading session uh, maybe once every two months or once a, uh, once a month for those of you who are new who want to get a flavor of what we're doing in real time. Um, there's a really extensive extensive training program uh, on the website. It's over seven hours of material. Uh, and um, we we know that at least 55, 58% of the members actually go through the training at their own speed. Um, it's all yours, by the way. There's no phase in for the $79. It's, it's a God knows how much you would pay for a kind of training program. That alone is worth signing up for. And there's all sorts of bonus trading reports and so forth and so on, plus, of course, the member website. You also have, uh, we have calculators. If you're on your own or if there's a different price now in the market for a put or call recommendation, you go to the calculator, it's hardwired, you type it in, it takes about three seconds and you can find out what your rate of return is. They're, they're wonderful. Um, uh, the, the website is a place for you to go to if you've missed an alert, you've wiped out your email, you wanna check on open positions, whatever. I answer questions. I answer all the ones that customer service feels it's appropriate for me. We have, I think, I think the best customer service in the industry, probably even better than your broker. And uh, it's the number one thing we get in feedback from all our customers that, wow, for this price, I can't believe people are picking up the phone, answering my questions, wanting to know how I'm doing. And there's discount pricing to live workshops. Uh, and you're made aware of special training programs, whatever else we do. Again, it's a, um, uh, I'm going to try to, I think I have the URL here. The, uh, um, if you have questions, you can call. Um, it's 866-257-3008. That's 866-257-3008. Um, ah, here they are. And here are the URLs. And um, I'm going to see if I can just put this in the chat box. Oh, I think I can. Um, I've never done this before. I usually have a moderator. Uh, there we go. So that's in the chat box. Um, so you can click on that and off you go. Now let me see if there are questions. Um, I'm looking here. I, these questions look like, oh, here we go. Whoa. Uh, Ron Gar, your trade alerts prices, we can actually get a fill. Uh, yes, um, this is a, a problem if you're impatient. If you expect to be filled in three seconds and you've, you're acting on the alert one hour after the alert went out, the, the option may have moved. Um, but uh, I'd say that about once a month, nah, <sighs> last one, six weeks. Once every six or seven weeks, I'll have to put out a correct and alert. So maybe five out of a hundred trades, six out of a hundred trades. I'll, it, it's just not actionable, but everything else is. Um, for Michael, OIB or Income Masters, I'm not sure who you are, uh, David. Uh, if you're a former Options Income Blueprint member or a former Income Masters member, if you're just getting started, 
options income blueprint is clearly the way to go. Income Masters is a uh, is a much more expensive program. There's no trials you can buy by the quarter. It's about 200 trades a year. It includes spreads. Um, we start to do hedging. It has two coaching sessions in the evening, about 22 coaching sessions. Uh, and, and I have a personalized email where it's pretty much a sh very short-term response. Uh, if you're basically getting started, um, I would do options income blueprint. If you have a very large portfolio um, and therefore the cost of a, a more aggressive program is not prohibitive, then I would take a look at income masters and try it for a quarter. Um, so are we buying the stock with the option? No. Um, it, one of the things not covered here uh, is what if you put shares? It does happen. I just, uh, people wanted to hedge. I do respond to emails and put trades on if people are concerned and people are concerned about the market. Um, and the hedge that I put in for the market, I hate gold. I think it's stupid. Uh, but if I'm going to do gold, I'm going to use the gold miners ETF, which is the GDX. And uh, it went down and um, we've been rolling it, but some people were assigned shares. I will typically make a one-on-one -on -one recommendation, not how to manage their money. I'm not a registered advisor, but where the calls are lining up and where they should do it. And if I find, if I get two or three emails or four emails that people have been assigned shares, it happens like once a quarter, I'd say five trades a year out of a hundred, I'll reference it in the update. Um, about once or twice a year, I will recommend we turn a put position into a call position that I want to accept the shares to be assigned and then to turn around and sell calls simply because of the movement of the stock. Um, uh, someone named Roz uh, Riz wants a phone call. Um, please um, go back here and call him right now. And um, the other thing to do is to send an email to support at tradersreserve.com. That's support at tradersreserve.com in case you've had problems getting through. Are there yearly fees? Uh, after the trial is over, uh, you'll be offered a subscription on a quarterly or a, a monthly or a yearly basis. I think we do all three. Uh, what are your thoughts on diagnosis instead of diagnosis instead of credit spreads? I'm not going to talk about spreads here. Um, uh, this is about selling weekly options. In Income Masters, we do leap call spreads, we do bull put spreads, and we do index spreads. Uh, and diagonals uh, would be bull put spreads, but this is not the time and the place for spread discussion. I have a $300,000 portfolio. Do you have a daughter who would like to marry one of my sons? Um, that's more than enough to get started in Options Income Blueprint. Are your trade alert prices? We can actually get a fill. Yes. Um, OIB or OIM. The shares, Riz, how do you deal with earnings? Um, in Options Income Blueprint, I probably put on one earnings position a quarter before. The way to trade earnings safely is after. Volatility builds up before earnings. The way to trade earnings in this approach, a safe approach, is after. So I put on an AMD trade today, okay? AMD was up over 13. Wall Street really didn't like their forecast. The stock fell apart. Um, you wait until it hits a support price. I see $10 of support. We sold the monthly $10 put today. That's the way to play earnings in this kind of an approach. The volatility is there. If the volatility goes into the stock because of earnings, it isn't going away when the press release comes out and it lingers in the premiums. What about earnings? I think I just answered that. Uh, second time concern of commissions. Are you taking these into account? Usually $5 in and $5 out. Is that accurate? If you close the position, the answer is yes. But my weeklies, the goal is for them to expire worthless. Um, and therefore, you're avoiding the back end. And, um, and so even if you're selling one contract and seven out of 10, 76% expire, expired worthless, as you can see, we had 24%, 22% rolled. So you're usually in pretty good shape. And you should find a broker that doesn't charge commissions if you close something out under a nickel. Two things about your strategy. I, I Spreads tend to be white on stocks, so why it's been to you. You're talking about the spreads, the bid, and the ask. Uh, I take the bid and the ask into account when I make a recommendation. There are plenty of stocks that I would love to trade in the service, and I can't because it's a published service, because the spread between the bid and the ask. Let me give you an example. It's a wonderful company called DICOM, symbol DY. It only has monthlies, and the spread between the bid and the ask is almost unmanageable. They build on behalf of T-Mobile and Comcast and Verizon. They're the preferred contract engineer 
to build the stuff that we need for more streaming. So instead of trying to figure out who's going to win, is it going to be cable, TV, Netflix, direct TV? You bet on the company that has to build for all of them. And, and so I can't recommend it in the service. It doesn't work. So I'm very mindful of it before I put an alert out. Do you hedge the open trades? Uh, no, not in, uh, not in options income blueprint. We had an Apple trade on an income masters. That was a bull put spread. Um, we have limited losses. Um, or size. Robert asked, what is the realistic amount on a size of county? I would say you shouldn't go below. You're going to need $25,000 to make this work for you. Below that, it's going to, it's going to be difficult. Um, are, are those net after commissions? We track performance before commissions. Um, so let's go. What's the equity curve look like following? I have no idea. What, uh, this is VJ asking me the equity curve. If you could repeat the question, I have no idea what an equity curve is. Um, how do you find your candidates? Uh, fundamental analysis. I do my own original research on trends um, and it's, it's been successful. Uh, the, um, the trend has to be something that Wall Street doesn't understand because it's looking in silos. And that's not to insult Wall Street. I insult them all the time. But analysis is done for customers, and customers have traditional silos, travel, mining, consumer durables, that kind of thing. I look for trends that cut across and where, where Wall Street's missing something. And that puts us ahead of Wall Street's view of the stock. And that's, for example, millennials versus boomer and boomers together was something I jumped on two and a half years ago. Uh, and, you know, the big winners have not just been travel, giant winners have been the cruise ship lines, Royal Caribbean, RCL and Carnival Cruise, CCL, because these people want fixed cost travel. Millennials want fixed cost travel more and more and only 3% of travelers have cruised. So you do your own fundamental research and there's no filters or screens that are quantitative. That comes down when I start looking at whether it's suitable for trading. So here's a summary. You think like an investor, okay? You trade like a trader. I think that's the best way to summarize. You find your stocks like you're an investor long-term and then you start putting on the option chain criteria of liquidity and um, whether you, uh, 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 whether the premiums are gonna be there at a half a percent a week minimum. Um, that's when you start applying some numerical filters, but underneath it, and for stock selection, I like undervalued stocks compared to the S&P 500 uh, or their sector or both. Doesn't always work. Gilead Sciences sells at a 70% discount to the S&P 500. It generates more net income on a dollar basis than any stock in the S&P 500, but it's a dead stock. Um, people are waiting for some miracle. And uh, so it's hard to trade. So you have to take the stock and the chart into account as well. So these trades are unlimited risk. If you put $1 into the stock market, you can lose it all. Um, I'm kind of firm on this. Your decisions about risk are when you approach equities. And then within that, if you're a spread trader, you say you're limiting risk. My approach is to never, ever give in to the desire to take a loss. Uh, the best example was probably four, four and a half years ago. U.S. Steel went from, I'd recommended to put from 22 down to 14. And we rolled it. It's a philosophical position. It, it, is, it, is, a, it is a discipline. And we got out uh, at, with a tiny, with a small profit after a period of about four or five months. Now that ties up your capital for four or five months and you may not be happy about that. But it's better than taking, uh, it's better than taking a 35% loss. So the whole notion of rolling and recovery, which you'll see if you join the service and take the training program, is married to a capital preservation strategy. They're not separable. So I know that hardcore traders have a certain, oh, I'm going to take this amount of risk, and if the stock goes down, I'm going to cut and run. You can't do that in my approach. If you do, you lose money. So uh, you have to be willing to roll and recover. And if you're not willing to roll and recover and consider that any trade can be extended into the following week. If you're not willing to accept that, this isn't gonna work for you. Uh, are trading the weeklies during earnings? Yes, as I said, um, I will often trade after earnings, but sometimes before. If I have a very strong feeling that the street's messed up, we've done it with Starbucks. Um, we did it with, no, I, I was going to recommend Western Digital, and I didn't because Seagate earnings are competitor with the day before, and they weren't good. 
So I didn't write the trade. I was going to put it on. I changed my mind. It turns out I was wrong. They had Western Digital had great earnings. So we traded it afterwards. Um, but the volatility is there. You're, you're looking at collecting premium on a weekly basis. So the volatility that's built in before earnings does not go away. So I prefer trading after earnings. How do you deal with taxes? Um, I, I, most of my 70% of people do this in a retirement account. If you do this in a regular account, you know, this is going to be ordinary income, but you should check with your accountant uh, about how you want to treat this. Uh, what is the regular subscription? Um, I would suggest you click on the URL that I put in the box and you go through and there are different offers. Uh, that are available to you. Um, or you can call customer support. They have different pricing um, for the trial, for the monthly extensions to the trial, for the quarter and for the year, and figure out what's best for you. For you. Um, oh yeah, this is an ongoing program. We've been doing this every week for six years. Um, it's The training is free. And I, I sound like a braggadocio, and I apologize in advance. The training program in this in this trading service is probably worth between 500 and a thousand bucks easy. And we don't, and a lot of places who offer you trials only give you emails. We can't be bothered. Why get somebody angry? Um, we have everything that a regular subscriber gets, you get in the trial. Full website, full training, customer support, email access to me. There, there's no limitations, there's no handcuffs. Our yearly fees, that's I said, you extend. What are the thoughts in Diane? Oh, we already did that. Okay, we already did that. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we may be done, but hang on a second. Um, what happens if you're getting close to being exercised? I don't know if that's for me or the previous speaker. We'll roll it. Um, for example, if it's a $50 strike and the stock's trading at $50.10 at midday on Friday, I would roll the position rather than keep your fingers crossed and hope something doesn't hiccup before the market closes. So if we're too close by a midday on Friday by 11.30 or 12 o'clock, we will roll the position. It's a reflex. Um, oh, that's the previous, <laughs> that was the previous speaker's question. Um, I think we may have done them all. Let's see. Uh, Let's see. There are some people who didn't like the first 15 minutes because they've already sold options. Um, well, it's just the way it is. Um, uh, I'm almost going to turn this back over. Um, Someone said something, and I want to respond to this. And I don't know if everybody's answering um, all the questions. Someone didn't like that the first 20 minutes was what that person called feathers. You have no idea how few people sell options. And the biggest mission I have, in addition to maybe getting you to sign up for a test drive, is to convince people that selling options and generating um, wonderful amounts of cash over the course of the year by taking what you might consider to be substandard amount of cash in a week is the most difficult thing I have to do. Whether I'm talking to a friend, I have a friend that I go to lunch with who's one of the most able economists, I think, in my opinion, in the United States, and follows Washington uh, and packages for Wall Street. He and his firm runs the firm. I can't get him to do this. He wants a home run. And, and, and we've known each other for 20 years and wants a home run. That's just his style. And so I do spend an inordinate amount of time convincing people about the need for simplicity and for selling options. And at the risk of being really rude, I have no apology for it. It's just the most difficult thing for many options. I know this is an options group for options traders to accept not 500%, but half a percent, not one transaction, but maybe multiple transactions, not buying, but selling time decay is your friend. Time decay is not your enemy. And, and that's why the opening was uh, that. Um, so I'm going to go, uh, crazy thought with selling puts, we want the strike to be lower than the stock price, but you look at the week expert, look at the premium. What are the odds that the price would climb that much? I didn't sell the AMD 13. I sold the AMD, we sold the AMD 10. I mentioned that AMD had been up to 13 and that it sold down. 
and then I waited for the selling to stop and it stopped uh, around 1030 or 1020, but the volatility was still in the stock. So I sold, we, I recommended selling the $10 put, not the 13. Um, about once every two years, I will sell it in the money put in the service, but I know people don't like them. I like selling in the money puts in my own portfolio, uh, but people in the service don't like them and they don't execute the trade. So there's no point. Um, are you helping people generate income? Yes. Most of my members that I, that I become familiar with through email or through the online or through the in-person seminars reinvest their cash. But there are some people who generate weekly income from this that they use. So the answer is yes. I'd say it's three in 10, 25 out of 100 extract some weekly income from this that they use to pay bills. How many trades do you get during this 60-day period? Um, I average about two trades, 2.2 trades a week. So over an eight-week period, you'll get between 16 and 20 trades. What would you do with Tesla? Um, I'd, buy the, I'd buy the test drive, and I would generate enough money to buy a Tesla. Um, I wouldn't do the stock. Um, the reason you don't do the stock is I can't do stocks in a conservative service gener designed to generate income when there's a if, – if Elon Musk, God forbid, decided – to change his life and not do what he's doing. The stock would lose 50% of its value. If it had a big miss where there was a fire in the battery factory in Arizona, it's going to lose 40% of its value. You can't put that into an income strategy that has a conservative um, approach. Independent of that, I do follow Tesla as a company. It's not a car company. It's not a solar company. It's a battery company. Its entire business model is to sell products that use batteries and that they have an extreme competitive advantage built on manufacturing technology, not on battery technology, but on the manufacturing of batteries will be their core competency. And it's the business model that Honda used starting from the late 1950s. They were a motor company and they happened to make cars because you put motors in cars. They changed the model in the late 1980s, early 1990s. But Tesla's a battery company and a really, really good one, but the valuation is so extreme it doesn't fit in this service. Um, no, I don't do Forex. Uh, someone asked to have been teaching about Forex trading. The only thing I know about Forex trading is every individual I've ever met that traded currency lost all their money. Um, how long does it take to go through your program? The training program that you get for free as part of the trial, it's about seven hours of content in pieces. You don't have to do it all at one time, obviously. Someone signed up for Options Income Blueprint. Uh, sorry, my daughter is already married and has two kids. Oh, well, I got great kids. Um, but th thank you for not offering her up. It would have moral turpitude. Um, I still don't know what, uh, VJ. I don't know what you mean by typical equity curve. I, I, don't, I don't understand the term. Are you talking about the chart or are you talking about which direction the stock is moving? Um, uh, can you teach us all about options? No, I mean, the training program, I, I, yes. I mean, the training program in the test drive defines a put, defines a call. It doesn't teach you about buying options. It'll only teach you about selling options. So I don't know if that would satisfy your requirements, um, but it does, it does go over what's a basic put, what's a basic call and so forth and so on. It doesn't teach you about buying. It only, it only uh, does about uh, selling. You have not gone through a market meltdown with this. What would you do if you faced a 2008 type situation? Um, we'd make three to five times more money than we make now, maybe 10 times. Um, if you're talking about a flash crash, there's nothing you can do, but 2008 wasn't a flash crash. And by the way, I ran a short service and I started recommending, I'm bragging, this is a flat out brag. We started, I started recommending shorting housing and banking stocks in February of 07, not 08. I, I, the first, I sort of identified through a series of websites, the beginning of the meltdown, just about, and I'm not in his league, don't get me wrong, but about the same time the guy in the big short did. It was just simple math and, and you know, whatever. Um, when there's a geopolitical based correction, we've made two to three times what we normally make. Why? There are exchange traded funds that go up when the market goes down. And you can trade them. When there's a geopolitical risk related to geopolitical uncertainty, you trade the precious metals, you trade currencies, um, and you trade those ETFs. If the market was correcting as it did in 07, 08, 
there are inverse ETFs on all the indexes, plus the Russell 2000, all those, we would make a fortune. We would probably be able to do somewhere between 50 and 100% a year in cash if we had that kind of a meltdown. Why? Because we're trading weekly. We're not, we, don't, we haven't sold something four months out that we're totally destroyed by. So I say that with confidence. We've gone through six corrections or, or five corrections. We've made money with everyone. Um, and uh, uh, it, that's just a track record. I'm not, this, this isn't a theoretical approach. It's just what you do. There's now enough liquidity in inverse ETFs, commodity ETFs, currency ETFs, that you can trade them all, all day long and make a lot of money when there's either a correction or a bear. Um, someone said, thank you. You're very welcome. This has really been a lot of fun.